Panasonic X1500. I've done another video on the CX10, which is the big brother to this camcorder. There's also the X2000, which is also above this, but the X2000 is exactly the same. The C CX10 is exactly the same with minor differences. Body-wise, the differences between this one and the other two is that this one does not have HDSDI, the other two do, and then this one also does not come with a top handle, the other two do. You can attach the same top handle, XLR top handle, you just have to pay $300 extra if you want it. Panasonic gave you the option of if you don't want that top handle, you don't want XLRs, you can just get this for $300 less. The internals are basically the same, the CX-10 has a more uh, sophisticated uh, live streaming capabilities and a couple different professional codecs. Otherwise, this is exactly the same as those other two cameras. And I've even done several videos now on my channel with the CX-10. I used to own the CX-10. I loved that camera. I tried to go to Canon for a little bit and I have discovered that Canon wasn't working for me. And now the X1500 is where I am currently happy about. And I'm gonna, in this video, talk about five things I really like about this camcorder. And these are the five that I feel differentiate the X1500 from all of the other camcorders that are within this market. The number one feature about this camcorder is the codex and frame rates. This is the most amount of frame rates and resolutions that I've ever seen in a camcorder. They, you can get all the way up to uh, 4K UHD at 60p, uh, 150 megabits, uh, 420, and then you can shoot as low as 720p. On this codec, it only goes to uh, 1080 because this is the MOV, but you can go to MP4 and I think there you can shoot 720p. This is the only camcorder in this price range that gives you 422 10-bit. You do not get 422 10-bit in any other camcorder below $2,000. You might get it with mirrorless cameras, but with camcorders, they don't give you 422 10-bit in 4K. The second reason why I like this camera is the zoom range. Optically, it's 24 times. It goes from a 25 millimeter, 35 millimeter equivalent, to a 600 millimeter zoom. Here is a, a 62 millimeter lens thread. And when you buy this camera, it comes with this lens hood. It does not come with a cap. The lens, it goes from a F1.8 to an F4 at 600 millimeters. The zoom lens is what separates camcorders to DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, cinema cameras. You're gonna spend so much more money to get the same equivalent zoom length in a DSLR or a mirrorless camera than just getting a camcorder. The third thing I like about this camera is the battery life. The other Panasonic prosumer cameras that have the same battery here, the same exact battery, and uh, it is very long lasting on the bigger cameras. Panasonic designed a huge cavity in here that fits their massive prosumer batteries, the same ones. It makes the camera last over four hours of battery life. This battery that I got, this is not the official one. This is one by uh, Castar. It's a third party. Third party batteries work just as good. It's not as long lasting, but it's way cheaper because these batteries are about a hundred bucks if you're if you're buying the official Panasonic ones. But uh, and all of them have these battery checkers. Two of these batteries could last for an all day event. You can't say the same thing for any other camcorder at this price range or lower. The fourth thing I like about this camera are the exposure controls and overall physical buttons to control the exposure. These buttons aren't the most tactile, but you get iris, gain, gain which is ISO, and shutter right here on the on as physical buttons. And then you have a mechanical ND filter. You don't get this on camcorders this price range or lower. You get this on the more expensive uh, $2,000 plus camcorders. The white balance has a button as well, if you were wondering about that, but it's underneath the LCD screen. And here's where you can see your values. So if I hit the gain button here, hit gain, and then now what happens is the gain here is controlled by this wheel, and I can control the gain. It doesn't do negative dBs like uh, the prosumer camcorders, but it does do gain. And to lock that in, I just press this in as a button. It gets locked in. I've already programmed this lens ring to control my iris. So here, I'm gonna turn down the iris. Lens ring controls the iris, there you go. And the fifth thing I like about this camera is the option to purchase 
a handle with XLR inputs. I don't have that uh, attachment, but I like the option that this camera gives you to have XLR, whereas other camcorders, they don't even give you that option. No camera is perfect, and here are some things that I wish were upgraded or just some complaints I have about this camera. The first one being is you do get a 422 10-bit, but you do not get V-Log. There's no log at all on this camera, and that really affects the second thing that I don't really like about this camera is the dynamic range. The dynamic range isn't as good as the mirrorless cameras and the uh, the one inch cameras. So this is a one over 2.5 inch, which is this really small sensor. And uh, the dynamic range, you could see that it does not hold up when you're in heavily contrast conditions where it's a bright sun and you're in a shadow area, you're gonna see blowouts. And then the shadows are gonna be pretty dark. And the last thing I don't like about this camera is the low light capabilities. And that's also due to the uh, small sensor. And just two nitpicks about this camera is I wish the handling was a little bit better designed because it does not feel as good as the Canon cameras in the hand because of uh, the shape of it. And the other thing is uh, with the, it does have XLR option and it does have a 3.5 mil jack here for, for uh, audio, but it only has two channels of audio. In fact, all of the Panasonic camcorders, even the prosumer ones, the ones that cost $3,100, they're all two channels of audio where everything else, it seems like it's moving to four channels of audio. The Canon XA series of camcorders, the, the, the competitors to this one, it has less features than this except for four channels of audio. You can get four channels of audio on, for example, the Canon XA70. Now here are some accessories that I purchased for the X1500 that I would use, and you, you might not need this, but these are helpful for me. The first one is the Scorpion Design Steadicam handheld. It was very cheap, very affordable. I did a whole video on this, and I use this when I'm going handheld, or also when I uh, am going handheld and I wanna put additional uh, accessories on it, and it, it holds very well. So I already showed the battery here that it's not the official Panasonic battery, and when you buy this, they don't give you a charger because you're supposed to charge it within the camera. I don't want to do that. So I got this, another K-Star. So the K-Star, it came with two batteries and this charger. And since I don't have the top handle XLR attachment, I wanted to have a top handle. So I got this small rig, 3764. It has the cold shoe, attaches this way right here. Lock it in and it looks just like this. Works very well. And finally, because this does not come with a lens cap, only a lens hood, sometimes I do want to detach the hood and just go without it. So I got this lens cap. This is a generic lens cap, 62 millimeters. Goes on right there, like that. Now I'm going to show some test footage between the X1500 and the Panasonic S52X. With this lens, the 24 to 105, I'm going to match the codec, match the exposure settings, match as much as possible with these cameras so you can see the differences and see if they can intercut possibly if you wanna have this kind of a setup or if you're deciding, should I go with the mirrorless full frame or a camcorder, uh, which one would I wanna get a go with as far as image quality goes. I did use a variable ND filter when I was outside, that's not in this video, but I used a, uh, a variable ND and that's how I was able to keep this at F4 and then this at F4 when I was shooting outdoors.
Now I'm going to test the low light capabilities of both cameras and see if they can match each other in an interior uh, setting that I have lighting. So with both of these cameras, I have them, tr I try to equal out as many settings as possible. They're on the Cine D, but the Cine D on the S2X is a Cine D2, but they're both at 5600K. The light, the daylight balance uh, light that I have on is 5600K. They're both at f4. X1500 is at 0 dBs, 148 shutter speed. S5 is at 150 shutter speed, uh, f4. ISO 200, it's the lowest ISO I can make this camera. So I can already tell right now that um, both shooting at equivalent f-stops, f4, the full frame mirrorless is clearly uh, more exposure. And now let's see what's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to try to match what I think the exposure is on the X1500 by increasing the gain. All I'm going to do is increase the gain on this. And uh, let's see, I'm going to go to gain. Oop. Okay, so now I, I just increased the gain. It's the gain on the X1500 is 10 dBs. So now at 10 dBs of gain, now it looks pretty similar in exposure settings. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn off the light. I'm gonna leave it at F4, but what I'm gonna do is only increase the gain and the ISO, S52X first. I'm just gonna adjust the ISO. I'm not touching the exposure, I'm not touching the f-stop or the shutter speed. So now this is three, 320, 400, 640, 800, and 1600. I'm gonna just leave it at 1600 right now. And then now the gain on the X1500 just to try to match it. Going up, this is 12, 15, 16, 18 dBs of gain, 22, 23, 26. Oh my gosh, it's looking very noisy, 29. 30, okay, right around 30 dBs of gain, which is not looking great, but here you can see, I'm not even maxing out the uh, what the, the S52X is even capable of with its uh, ISO 1600. This is on the low gain setting on, on the, uh, the Lumix S52X, but on the X1500 here, it's 30 dBs. I think 30 dBs is as high as it gets and now we're looking at what they're capable of. Now what I'm gonna do is show you what the uh, S52X can really do in low light at f4. Uh, and I'm gonna leave, well I can't really do much with the X1500, the 30 dBs is, is, is the max I can do. What I could do is lower the f-stop, but let's just say the f-stops are equal for right now. Now let me bring up the S52X's gain at the high ISO, the, uh, with the dual native ISO, it's on the high setting. So right now it's at ISO 2000. Now let's go to 2500, 32, 4000, 64, 1000, 12,800. This is 20,000 ISO, 32,000 ISO. Let's go 51,200 ISO on the Lumix S52X. And yeah, you can see right now, this doesn't really compare. Let me go back down to something that's normal exposure, which I think would be at around maybe uh, 8,000. And now to try to get an equivalent, what I could do is open up the lens on the uh, X25, uh, X1500. Let me see if I can open it up. Uh, I gotta zoom out for this too. Zoom all the way out, there we go. I'm zoomed all the way out so that I can get the maximum open aperture of the X1500. And then now it's getting close. So it needed that combination of the, the widest uh, open aperture and then the ISO 3 uh, or the 30 dBs of gain, but it's still very grainy. And this is as high as uh, the X1500 can get.